All right, let's start. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Yuzo. Uh, this is EC318 Electronic Circuit 1. And today is our 12th lecture. And uh, can everybody hear me? And also being able to see my uh, shared screen here? Yep. All right, thank you, Shane. Thank you. So uh, we can go ahead. Uh, regarding midterm one, I haven't yet got a chance to grade it. So I'm quite busy with the uh, 341 grading, which has 30, 31 students in. So quite a bit of grading there. So um, we might be able to uh, review our midterm one by either the Thursday or maybe even next Tuesday. Okay. So uh, no feedback about that yet. All right, so by watching our Gantt chart here, I think uh, they're here. Okay, this particular cell, yeah, homework two is due uh, just uh, two minutes ago, actually. And uh, so from today on, we start to study the new module, module three. Okay. And if you recall the course pattern, I call it course pattern. This table is uh, very nicely organized, um, pretty much summarizing the all of the knowledge uh, we we learn from this course into this table. So now we can say, what this entire row is done, right? This entire row is done, which includes the basics of the diode, EC analysis of the diode, and AC analysis of the diode. The AC analysis, of course, including the AC small signal and the AC large diode circuit analysis. Right. So this is the uh, diode. The first row gone. Okay. First row gone. Assessed by midterm one as well. Okay. So we start to talk about the MOSFET and the following the same sequence, beginning with basics, followed by DC analysis and AC analysis. PDT, which is second type of transistor. First, you need to realize both MOSFET and the BJT have a letter T as the very last uh, letter. Because you know MOSFET and the BJT, they're not uh, the full name. They're just abbreviations. Okay. So the le very last letter T is representing transistor. So both are transistors, okay? just the two types of transistors. If you see what's the difference. So the pattern, in terms of the learning pattern and uh, the knowledge pattern were exactly the same. Okay? Module 3, which is Chapter 3, covering the basics and the DC analysis for the MOSFET, followed by Module 4 and the Chapter 4 in textbook, covering the AC small signal analysis. Okay? Transistor, MOSFET, and the BJT, we are not going to study the uh, large AC uh, analysis. Okay, they're pretty much power electronic stuff. We just study the small signal AC. Okay, keep this in your mind, small signal. And the small signal only. All right. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, this cell. Obviously this cell. Uh, today is about this cell. The basics of MOSFET. What does it mean by basics? Again. Okay. If you talk about semiconductor structure, how it, it is uh, made, okay. and then more importantly, we will learn the uh, circuit symbols, which include we will see three terminals this time, and who are they, and how to identify them, which is which. Assuming it is placed in the circuit, you need to be able to identify which terminal is which. Okay. It's a very, very important, and very, very important. And then followed by IV curve. Uh, who is the I, who is the V, and what does the curve look like? And uh, related to our upcoming uh, labs, et cetera, et cetera. OK, this is the basics. Okay. Here. All right. So any questions regarding the uh, this kind of uh, table or this kind of uh, organization? Rough idea. Any questions? Any concerns? 
All right, if nothing, we go ahead. We just go ahead. Chapter three, yeah. corresponding to our module three. Field effect transistor. So we can tell field effect transistor, these three words are what? Fat, right? Fat. So we call 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 it fat. And, uh, hold on. I'm trying to find here we go. Okay. So field effect transistor fat. And uh, here, before talking about any uh, details about the transistor, uh, you need to understand what the what the transistor is for. You know, what are the transistors for? Transistors could be used in two major applications. One is called switching. What does mean? What does mean by switching? It's very easy, right? Transistor can work as a switch, which means what? Only two states, off or on. Very easy. Pretty much what same as diode, right? Because diode only has two states, right? On or off. So pretty much diode is nothing but a switch. A transistor can work as that. Okay, can work as that. Okay, can do switching job. Yes. And uh, it can also be used to work as amplifier. Okay. So second application is the major concern in 318 and 358. We call it also as continuous control. Yeah, what does it mean by continuous control? We will take a look. Yeah, we will see how it works. Uh, how make your transistor works as an amplifier and how this amplifier is designed and calculated, et cetera, et cetera. We will see that, okay? And uh, a voltage or current at one terminal controls current flows uh, between other two terminals. This is a, a little bit blur without knowing the details, but this is a description of the uh, continuous control uh, uh, amplifier application. So two applications for transistors for both MOSFET and BDT, yeah, for both MOSFET and BDT. And then now let's just talk about the FAT, the field effect transistor. The classification of it. First, the type of uh, FAT is MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor MOSFET. Second FAT is uh, JFAT, JFAT, two types. And this course is talking about this guy, MOSFET. JFAT, we are not uh, touching, we're not touching, but it exists. And if you are interested in, you can take a look at the textbook. So the MOSFET has enhancement mode or depletion mode. The mode we are studying is this one, enhancement. And there, which we are studying the N channel and the P channel, or say the N MOS and the P MOS. Depending on the time, we probably talk a little bit about CMOS or not, maybe not. CMOS is very popularly used in the uh, digital circuits. And these two are for analog circuits. In law. And this is digital circuit. So now is it basically clear what we are learning and uh, uh, which category they fall into? Okay. MOSFET. Enhancement mode, N channel, and a P channel. Okay. You see these two types of a MOSFET. Okay. 
So first of all, let's talk about the in-channel. Now, what is an in-channel MOSFET? In-channel MOSFET is made like this. Now, what is what you are seeing is a picture. Is is actually zoom in picture uh, showing the semiconductor uh, structure, including a substrate. Substrate is a white color here. This is a substrate. It's kind of a base from where you can grow or doping semiconductor materials to form certain uh, structure. So this substrate on top of which we doping the n-type semiconductor to form a source terminal and the drain terminal. One is called source, another is called drain. In the middle, there's a channel, a so-called channel, a region between the source and the drain, and then which is called gate terminal, gate terminal, source gate drain, three terminal. For now, just to try to remember the names and how to identify them and what does it look like in the circuit are the point that for today and which we will discuss in details later. Okay. Now, just the being aware, three terminals, device, source gate drain. The diodes is just a two terminals. So one is cathode, and the other is the uh, the other is the uh, anode, right? So anode cathode. Okay. But to MOSFET, three terminals: source, gate, drain. Here, the substrate itself is a p-type semiconductor, and the source and and the drain are n-type semiconductor. Okay. So how you dope them? And uh, with certain, of course, channel width and channel length matters a lot for the semiconductor uh, for the MOSFET uh, parameters. You see that? And uh, further, the key is how to turn on this in channel MOSFET okay? and, or how to turn it off. How to turn it on? Uh, turn it on, you need to apply a positive voltage on the gate. Here, be very careful with respect to the source. Okay. You want to take a note here with respect to respect to source. Of course, it's not a surprise that uh, source is represented by letter capital S, drain is capital D, gate is the capital G, okay, G, E, S, G, D, S, representing respectively gate, drain, and source. Okay. How to turn it on? You need a positive voltage across gate and the source. Be very careful. It's not gate drain. It's not gate to the substrate either. It's gate with respect to the source. Okay. It's very important to understand because whenever we talk about a voltage as well, it's concepts involving two terminals. Always involving two terminals. There's, we can't say, well, well, I'm applying a voltage onto one terminal. No, you can't do that. That's not a voltage concept. Of course, by default, the second terminal, the, the reference is the ground. That's why sometimes people don't even mention it. However, it does exist. Okay. So it's always between one terminal with respect to somewhere or so-called reference. Most of the time it's ground, but sometimes it is not. And of course here, the source is the reference, and it's not necessarily the ground, right? Obviously, it's not necessary. Right? So turn on this in-channel MOSFET. You apply a voltage, pause the negative like this, between gate and the source. Okay? How to turn it off or remove this voltage? 
or give a reversed, reversed polarity voltage. And then it is gonna turn off. Right? So they're just simple like that, just simple like that. Roughly, of course. Um, Connor has a question. He says his mic isn't working. Why can't you use the dream? Why can't you use the dream? Uh, remember one thing is very important is from the semiconductor structure here, we cannot tell actually, because you see the dream and source, there's no difference, right? There's no difference in between, right? From here. However, there's a big difference. There's a big, big difference. Um, yes, from here, we, can, we cannot tell either because it seems symmetrical, right? But it is not. It is not. Uh, to be honest, I'm not expertise in, in the semiconductor physics. However, I can tell you the source and drain are absolutely different. Yeah, they are absolutely different. It's not like you can do either one. No, that's absolutely not right. That's absolutely not right. Just from this kind of uh, generic uh, diagram, it is not showing what's the difference. But no, you can't reference to the dream. Same thing, be very careful in the later calculation and analysis, remember, we never talk about the voltage between the gate and dream. Okay. Students, a lot of students make such mistakes, actually. I don't know, it, was it because the uh, this diagram, this very di diagram, uh, or, or what? Uh, but remember, in later DC analysis, AC analysis, remember, we never discuss about the voltage between the gate and dream. We can't know it. We can't know it. There's no characteristics, behavior, or principle talking about this particular voltage. No, not at all. Okay, remember this. So, yep, uh, the bottom line is green and source. They're absolutely not the same. Okay, okay. So from here we cannot we cannot see that. Agree with it. Agree. However, they're absolutely not uh, uh, exchangeable. And why it's called in channel, right? The, the reason is explained a little bit here. When you establish the voltage once again, positive at the gate, negative at the source, what happened? Of course, it needs to be big enough, okay? There's a threshold, just like the cutting voltage of the diode, okay? There's a threshold voltage, maybe you'll see later. But as long as this, with this particular polarity, the voltage is big enough, it will be on. When it's on, the major carrier for the current flow is the electron, rather than poles. I don't know how much you guys uh, know this semiconductor thing. We have two types of uh, uh, carrier, right? Which induce further the current flow. It could be either electron or holes. When is electron? This is the n-type. When is holes? It's p-type. That's why it's called n-channel or p-channel. Pretty much n-type n uh, major carrier or p-type a major carrier uh, introducing the current flow. This is why it's called n-channel. In this class, I'm not planning to uh, Assessing too much about the semiconductor knowledge, but they're they're there. They're there. Okay, some basics. A further here, like I said, you need your VGS, the voltage between the gate and source, to be great, great big enough, right? Exceeding the threshold voltage, and the threshold voltage is called V e sub T n. A subscript, look at the subscript, is very what? Meaningful. Right? T means what? 
threshold. N means what? N channel. Okay, so, so VTN is pretty much, if you've seen VTN in the problem or any uh, textbook anywhere, it is telling you what? First, this is threshold voltage. Second, it is telling you what? We are talking about N channel MOSFET. So be very careful. Because for P channel MOSFET, we will see we have different, different subscripts for the threshold voltage. So VTS, if it's exceeding the threshold voltage, of course, what happened? Current start to build up. Means it is on. Start to be on. Okay. Of course, here you need to also be careful. The VDS, which is talking about the voltage from the drain towards the source with respect to the source, this voltage means needs to be positive as well. This is how you turn on this uh, in channel MOSFET. And let's see how the IV curve looks like, and then followed by circuit symbols. Okay. Because these two are the most important things from today's lecture. Okay. First, the IV curve. First, you need to understand uh, IV curve means which I and the which V, and, and the why is that. Okay, let me explain a little bit. Let me explain a little bit. The Go to here. We haven't yet learned the uh, circuit symbols, so that's why I'm uh, I'm not trying to presenting them. You will see, but we know we have three terminals, right? Eight in the middle, three and source on two sides, and your understanding of this device is should be like this: three and source are going to be connected to the rest of the circuit. Eight is what a kind of a control terminal. So what happened is, what is IV characteristic curve about this device then? IV curve means y axis is i, x axis is v. Okay. What matter is which i and which v? Three terminals, three connections. We might have multiple choices for I what and V what. Does it make sense? I mean the subscript. So which I makes sense and which V makes sense? This is something you should be able to answer by yourself. Once again, drain and source is going to be connected to the rest of circuit. The gate is kind of a control terminal. So what is the, what is the uh, consequence then? The voltage across this guy is the V. The current through this guy, this device, is the I, right? So who is the V? The voltage across this device, who is it? V what? DS. Does this make sense? Because the DS, again, they are the terminals connected to the rest of the circuit, which means your voltage across this device means Watch across these two terminals. And who is I then? Is the current through this device? Who is it? I what? What's the subscript? Anyone? Anybody there? Is it uh, IDS? Mm, good. Is IDS okay? However, this is this is a transistor. 
one terminal's current might be different from another terminal. It might be, not necessary. So we are using ID, which means the current here, which might be same as here, which also might be not. Okay. So we just select one ID rather than IDS because IDS is pretty much uh, implying the ID equals IS, right? Which is, well, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. We don't know yet. So the tr to the transistor is like this. To the transistor is like this. Transistor can have different current here and here. Transistor can make this happen. So we don't want to uh, remember like a DS. It's just an ID and IS. If they're same, we call ID equals IS. If they're not same, we call ID is not equal to IS. This is how we uh, study it. Okay. But uh, the shading was right. Okay. It's the, pretty much the current here. And we pick this one, just ID. Okay. This is how you understand the IV curve. IV curve is talking about the voltage across this device versus the current uh, through this device. According to this definition, you go ahead to think of which I and which D, which V. Okay. All right. So with B, this being said, let's come back to the uh, slides here. We can see when the VDS is small, not very big, what happened? The current versus VDS is kind of linear, right? However, this is a very small range. This is a very small range for VDS. It's not significantly big at all. Very small. And with the VDS further increase, what happened? Nonlinear behavior happened. Right? Okay, this is this is why transistor is uh, more complicated and more difficult. There's nonlinear behavior. Right? The current is not increasing linear linearly with respect to the increase of the VDS. And then it can reach a, a so-called set. What does set mean? Saturation, okay. S-A-T, saturation. This is the boundary. A VDS reach a saturation boundary. Beyond this boundary, what happened? Current is barely increased. Okay. Be very careful. This, this region here. This region here is not flat line. Okay, this current is not flat line. This part, the current is not flat line. In other words, the slope is not zero. The slope is very small, but not zero. Okay, we view, uh, we view derive this uh, curve, IV curve from the lab, but uh, be very careful. It's not zero. Okay, it, it, the slope is not zero. It's not flat line. Just the increase very small increase very slow compared to the increase the VDS is very small. Okay. Makes perfect sense. This is called what? Saturation region. The current is saturated. Right. The current is saturated. However, this is just the one curve, right? This is the one curve. Be careful. This corresponds to one particular VGS. Correspond to one particular VGS. I'm sorry for my uh, writing here. It's very difficult to, to write in the uh, slides. Okay. Correspond to one particular VGS. And if you apply different value of VGS, you're going to have what? Like this. Multiple curves. They always looked like this, linear increase and then reach the uh, saturation boundary and then become saturated, right? However, they had different what current level, at different current level. We can also say this is, this is the first curve, the lowest curve is corresponding to VGS1, which is just beyond the threshold voltage VTN. Second curve corresponds to VGS2, which is greater than VGS1. Makes sense. You increase the VGS, then your current and your IV curve shift up. 
Third one is VGS3, fourth one, VGS4, and so on. And this region, this dash line here, this is the so-called saturation voltage boundary. Left to it is called non-saturation region. Right to it, right to this boundary, is called saturation region. And this saturation boundary voltage value is up to VGS. It, it is equals to VGS minus the threshold voltage. So from here, you can tell with the increase of the VGS value, your IV curve is what? Shift up and also is a little bit of what? Actually shift right as well, right? Does it make sense? Repeating this a little bit into our graph here, which you might want to uh, take, take some notes. Yes, it looks like this. Okay. Well, what we will be able to see in the lab will, will look like this. Obviously, they correspond to VGS1, VGS2, VGS3, and the VGS4. And uh, they have relationship like this, right? For increasing VGS value. And also, you have a saturation boundary here. Saturation boundary here. This region, this region here, call it non saturation region. This region here, call it saturation region. And in this IV curve, you have third region, which is down here. Anyone knows this, this region is correspond to what scenario? What's happening in this region? Anyone knows? And open, and open means uh, I, I I believe Connor is right, but any better description? And open means also others. Any comments for this region down here? Off, very good. Josh is right. I like Josh's uh, answer more. <laughs> this is just a half, right? Does it make sense? And this region is called cutoff region. This region is called cutoff region, which means the transistor is off. The transistor is off. And you can imagine you pretty much go down and then the v, you're reducing the VGS. So here, you, this region corresponds to what? You pretty much, your VGS, what? It's le less than the threshold voltage. It's too small, VGS is too small. And you can also, excuse me, see in this region what happened. The current is very small, right? Current very small means what? Off, it's open, per se, it's off. Just the switch, like open, uh, open the switch is all off, open circuit. That's why Connor was right too, actually. But I just like the off. Okay, this this on off, this makes uh, pretty much perfect sense. Does it make sense? So this is the cutoff region. It's uh, representing the off behavior of the transistor.
not done yet. Be very careful. This is what then? This is off. Okay. This region here can represent certain behavior of the transistor as well. Anyone, any thought? This region here, the NAND saturation region. What do you think? Any thoughts? Um, I'm going to guess on. Good, very good. It's, it's just a guess or what's the, what's the sense? Why it is on? The uh, current is increasing with the and, voltage. And uh, how about the voltage? That's uh, also increasing. Well, it should be. It's just like this, right? You, you assuming you have a switch, ideal switch. If you make it on, what happened to the voltage across it? A switch. You, you. You turn on the switch, which means you close the switch. What's the voltage across it? Zero. Zero. Exactly. And the current, how about the current? Start to flow, right? Depending on the rest of circuit, circuit, of course. However, no matter how much the current flows through, what happened to the voltage? Remaining small as zero. Does it make sense? Ideally, of course, zero. But not ideally, you have some voltage drop, right? So it's not exactly zero. But the point is, no matter what is the current, your voltage is very small. That's why this is off. Make sense now? So ideal switch. So speaking back to the ideal switch, what what does the IV curve of, the, of this ideal switch look like? Straight line here and the heater. Does it make sense? The horizontal part, this is what off. The vertical part is what on. Perfect sense. Same here. The horizontal, well, the close to horizontal part is on, off. The close to the vertical, this region, the non saturation region is on. Perfect sense. Small voltage, the current could be any value along the axis. That's off. Small current, the voltage might be any value along the axis that is off. Right. Perfect sense. Perfect sense. So what's the conclusion? These two regions, these two regions for what? Switching application. Remember, right? The first slide. Two different applications for transistor, right? One is switching. Second is, second is what? Anyone remember? Amplification. Amplification. Good. Very good. Very good. Josh is uh, is uh, engaging very well. So switching and amplification. Okay. So from this IV curve, which region is for amplification then? I mean, it's, <laughs> I think uh, you don't need to. Uh, attend this class, you can also guess it right, right? Which region is for the amplification then? Here, right? This is the only region left. Your switching occupy two regions and then only third one, one region left. Of course, that is for amplification. Does make sense? This is how you kind of link all of the knowledge we learned, uh, we have ever learned. Okay, they're they're kind of the interconnected. Okay, so when you try to find uh, transistor, say given a MOSFET circuit, and ask you what is the amplification gain, you need to what? First of all, check if your operation point is falling to the saturation region. If it is not even falling to this region, guess what? It cannot work as amplifier. Okay? It's not amplifier. It's just a switch. Does it make sense? So you need to check that. Asking for amplification gain. Well, is it amplifier or switch? You don't know yet. A transistor could be either one of them. Okay. 
We need to check. Okay. We need to check. Does everything so far make sense? Any questions? Come on, guys. You guys are too quiet. I'm not, I'm not used to it. my, of course, online course. This is my first time. I don't know. In my in-person course, you know, it's, it's really full of interaction, full of interactive Q&A through the entire class. This is, this is the most significant style of, of my teaching, but uh, the pandemic screwed it up. But it's, uh, but the, in, the online course you guys do for, feel free to, to to interact. Okay, without interaction, guess what? You're not learning much. Trust me. Okay? Trust me. Without questioning, without Q and A, no, uh, you're not learning as much as you supposed to. All right. This is the IB curve, and then go back to the slides. By the way, my shift button is 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 down. That's why I can't I can't directly uh, show this. H. IV curve is uh, kind of important, especially for the later uh, midterm exam multiple choice. Okay, I have some new questions regarding the IV curve. Okay. And uh, here are some uh, formulas for you to conduct the calculation. Okay, for example, here has a new concept here. It's a parameter for the n-channel MOSFET, k sub n. Once again, the subscript is very meaningful. It's uh, n-channel. Okay? As you can imagine, the p-channel is k sub p. But conduction parameter, conduction parameter equals to half kn prime times w over l. Anyone remember who is the w, who is l? Who are they? Width and length of and channel. Good, good, very good. Of the channel. Oh, great, great job. Width and the length. Good. Everybody, all of you guys noticed this width and length. Very good. Very good. It's of the channel. Okay, of the channel. Okay, in previous slide. Very good. Very good. Very good. And uh, where the n, Kn prime is another uh, parameter, so-called process conduction parameter. As electrical engineering students, we don't have to uh, understand deeply why and how they're called so. We just need to kind of have a rough idea. Remember, this is called process conduction parameter. And W over L is the width to length ratio. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. And uh, mu sub N and this capital C sub OX means the electron mobility and gate capacitance. They are obviously the uh, uh, parameters of the MOSFET itself. Generally speaking, is given, or you can check from the uh, data sheet. This is a little bit of the calculation here. We mentioned then saturation region, saturation region, and cutoff region is off, so we don't need to talk about it. So for non saturation and saturation region, we have respectively different current calculation uh, equation. And if you see how we use that, for now, you just need to be aware that we have two different regions, therefore two different versions of ID equation. Okay. As to how to use them, we will see in the DC analysis, which is next to thing, which is the next thing in the table. Okay. All right, we can move on here. But this page, very important, very, very important. Okay. 
Besides of the IV curve, there's a second important thing for today's lecture. Circuit symbol. Circuit symbol, we have two versions, unfortunately. Okay. This is called a conventional symbol. And then we have second one used in textbook. In this course, we use the second one. We use the second one. Try to be consistent with the textbook. What you're seeing is actually a, a short bar a long bar, right? First of all, short bar is nothing but the gate. Very easy to be identified. And right in the middle as well. The gate. Okay. It's the gate terminal. And then we have uh, other two terminals out of this long bar. And the one of the terminal has what? An arrow with it. A terminal with arrow on it is the source. A terminal here, what do you see? No arrow, right? No arrow. Then this terminal is dream. This is how you differentiate dream and source. Not very difficult, but don't make mistake. Otherwise, you can imagine it's quite messy. Okay. Any further analysis is going to become messy. This is the dream uh, gate and source and circuit simple in channel. Later on, we're going to learn the P channel MOSFET circuit simple, and then I'm going to put them together to give you a summary how to differentiate between in channel and P channel. And then in each, you're going to identify which terminal is which terminal. This is very important. Okay. All right, we can move on. To P channel. P channel similar. Now we have a substrate on based on which we go into different types of semiconductor to become source and drain. The only difference is what? The, the type of semiconductor is flipped, right? Substrate this time is not P type, but N type. Source and drain are P type rather than N type. So this time, what you need to worry about is not VGS, but VSG. I'm using the red color to emphasize the variation or say the difference in the subscript here. This time, what you need to worry about is the VSG, not VGS. Okay. Remember, the subscript flipped for P channel. And what you need to worry about is if whether the BSG is less than the negative VTP. Okay. If it is so, then the P channel MOSFET can be turned on. Of course, you see a similar issue of the threshold voltage. BSG need to be smaller than the negative VTP. To turn on the P channel MOSFET. And this time also, uh, one very significant thing is here. Is here. Back on here here. N channel, P channel, your current, this is D, this, this is S. Again, skipping the uh, circuit symbol here. The current can only flow from the dream to the S, the current. This is one way, okay. Transistor can only conduct a one-way current, just like that, that like like the di diode. Okay. P channel is what? Dream and I ask once again. However, the, the P channel is the other way around. Okay. 
also one way current only. This is a, you need to be very careful. And then in the P, a lot of things are flipped. Current direction flipped, voltage polarity flipped. And what else? The voltage the, uh, the voltage subscript flipped. Here, we, what we are talking about? EDS. And also, we worry about VGS. To P channel, what we worry about? VSG, not v, uh, VGS. And also, we worry about what? VSD. See the polarity flipped? Current direction flipped? Subscripts as well. Everything flipped. Of course, it makes sense. I mean, your current is flow the other way around, and then your voltage, of course, definitely is flipped polarity. Otherwise, it makes no sense. The voltage polarity flipped, and so does the subscript here. The first letter of the subscript always represents the, the positive polarity. Second letter here is representing the negative polarity, the voltage. That makes sense. They change together. They change together. Come back to here. Here is the current direction is into the source and out of the drain, just like uh, what we just uh, draw here. Opposite, it's opposite. And uh, does it make sense? Everything is flipped, flipped down. If you keep talking about VDS, and then of course it's flipped down here like this. And if you talk about VSD, like we just uh, discussed, it's actually same as what. In channel, I be her. Right? And also, it's basically the same with the increase of VSD. What happened? Linear increase and then reached a saturation boundary and then becomes close to flat line. And also, three regions saturation, non saturation, and cutoff. All of those remain the same. the P channel and uh, also due to then saturation and saturation region we have two uh, version of ID calculation for P channel MOSFET and uh, conduction parameter is not case of N anymore but case of P which is equals to uh, half KP prime times the width to length ratio. This part about same. same. And of course, this is a very important. We won't use the conventional one. I just uh, focus on the uh, textbook version. See? They're worrying about a voltage VSG, not VGS. And uh, the positive is on S, negative is on G, VSG. On VDS, but VSD. On S to D, current is going into the first leaving from the dream. Look at this. Uh, what's the difference between the N channel and P channel in terms of the circuit symbol? Anyone can tell. What's the difference? Circuit symbol. Is it just the uh, arrow? Arrow what? Arrows uh, facing the opposite direction on S. Oh, very okay. good. It's the direction of the arrow is different. Okay, that's the only difference. Connor was not wrong either. The arrow is an indicator of what? 
be aware of this, okay? For both N channel and P channel, the arrow in the circuit symbol is an indication of the current direction. Make a perfect sense. This arrow is going into the source, okay? From the source, say, from the source to the gate, and then towards the dream. This makes perfect sense. Okay, once again, the arrow in the circuit symbol for both N channel and P channel is indicating the current direction. That's why they're opposite to each other, right? N channel and P channel, because the current direction is opposite. But how to identify the source and the dream? That rule remains the same, which is the terminal with arrow on it is the source. It doesn't matter what's the current direction, okay? Well, it doesn't matter the arrow current direction. We just know a terminal with arrow on it is the source. A terminal right here without arrow is the dream. This rule remains. Now, this rule remains. Does it make sense? The gate, of course, very easy to tell. Very, very easy to tell. Right? All right. So with this being said, do a little bit of summary here. For what's that? Go ahead. Identify first of all is N channel or P channel. Second, identify which terminal is which. Give you guys uh, three, uh, two minutes, two to two, two to three minutes. Go ahead. Try this out once again. N channel or P channel. Second, uh, which is which. All right, let's take, take a look at the uh, solution here together. So first one, the N-channel or P-channel? P-channel. P-channel. That's the P. And then let's go ahead to identify the terminal then. This, the, the begin with the easiest one. This is gate. I don't need to ask. Pretty sure you guys uh, know this well. And then the top one is what? Yes. And bottom one is dream. Good. Second one, N channel or P channel? Uh, is that P channel as well? There we go. Gate here, the top is what? Dream. Bottom is source. There we go. Third one is well, N channel or P channel? N channel. There we go. Gate. 
this is what, n-channel or p-channel? That's n-channel. Okay, this is what? Source. Here we go. Any uh, questions? You, obviously, you, you have to be very efficient, very accurately identify them before doing anything else, right? I mean, given the circuit, if you can't even do this correctly, what you can imagine what's going to happen next. Nothing else could be right. This is very basic. This is very, very basic. So you have to understand how. You have to understand how. Is there any questions? Anything you want to make sure? So just to confirm, the uh, arrow mm -hmm. is always on the S channel, right? Yes, always. The, 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 the well, not channel, but S terminal. Uh, yeah, source. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the, the, the S terminal, per se, the terminal has arrow on it. No matter what is the direction, no matter what's the direction of the arrow, okay, it doesn't matter which direction, as long as the terminal has arrow on it, that's the source. Any other questions, concerns? Yeah, just to clarify, so with the N channel, the current is always going uh, to the source and the P channel yes. is always going to the drain? Okay. Correct. Yes. The P channel, your current is leaving the dream. Is leaving the dream. Right. Is leaving the dream. Is going 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 down. Or how to identify you to see the P channel, the current is from the source going into the gate, basically, right? Or say from the source going into the transistor. Right? Here and here. The N channel means what? The current is leaving the gate and it's towards the source. Leaving the transistor towards the source, leaving the leaving it towards the source here from the transistor from this long bar towards the source, leaving the long bar towards the source. And eventually, the current leaving the, the entire transistor from the source. Okay, here is entering from the source. So they're opposite. The current direction opposite. So this might, uh, must be very clear. That must be very clear. Right. Any other uh, questions? All right, if this is fine, then we go ahead. Again, my shift button doesn't work. Summarizing the N channel, P channel together is there's a table uh, including some calculations here. But you can tell basically what the what the pattern is exactly the same. You have a threshold voltage in the N channel, so does the P channel. Just what the sign is different. The N channel N channel threshold voltage is greater than zero. Okay. But the P channel is less than zero. We have uh, conduction parameters K for N and P, respectively. Two different regions for IDs. And the two saturation boundary voltage for VDS and VSD, respectively. And from every, everything, you can see the different uh, subscripts, different subscripts. To differentiate n channel and p channel case right? we're not talking about the calculation yet okay uh, when we reach there we will see how to use the equations here right now we're just the concepts the basics okay? you understand what's going on now and we also have a output resistance output resistance means the output resistance between the drain and the source okay the drain and the source because three terminals device who is the output resistance? You need to understand this. It's the drain and the source, the resistance between drain and the source. It's calculated by this equation, in where the VA is the early voltage. VA is early voltage. This is a new concept. Uh, we previously learned a VT, right? Thermal voltage. Now this is a VA. 
be a early voting. Early voting is what? Early voting is in ID curve, you can find it. How to find it? You reversely extending the saturated IB curve, what do you see? They're going to converge to one point along the X axis. That point is obviously as a voltage along the voltage axis. The voltage value is VA. That's early voltage. So what do you think about this early voltage, big or small? What do you expect? VA is big or small? Any thought? Small. Why is that? Any other thoughts? No. <laughs> oh, I see. Kevin asking small is right or wrong? No, uh, small is not right. Uh, the correct answer is big and very big. Why is very big? Anyone tell? Well, by small and big, we are talking about talking about VA value, right? VA value, not negative VA value, right? because it's falling onto the negative side of the uh, VDS axis. Maybe your small means very big magnitude of VA. If so, then Kevin was right. Okay, VA is very big value. Why is that? Remember, we said he said rated uh, IB curve is very flat. Remember, very flat. Flat means your slope is very small. So if you reversely extending them, what do you see? It takes a forever for them to converge onto the same point. Does it make sense? It takes forever means what? Very very far away, which means a big VA. Because your curve is not steep. Is not steep enough to converge quickly. If the, the, the curve is like this, guess what? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna convert to one point very early, right? Very quickly, just at this point. And this VA is very small. However, see the slope is very small. They're very flat. You're re reversely extending them, of course. It, it, it convert together, meet each other. Very far away. Does it make sense? So VA is a big voltage. V VA is a big voltage. However, how big it is, you got to remember, uh, this is an electronic, microelectronic circuit. Your expectation cannot be the same as the power circuit. To the power circuit, maybe 10 volts is a very, it's a very, very small voltage. 100 volts is kind of okay voltage. However, 100 volts to the electronic circuit is a very, very big value. Okay. So your expectation on this VA should be around 100, okay, rather than 1,000 or even 10,000. That, that's impossible. The electronic. And this VA is also equal to 1 over lambda. Now, lambda is another new concept called channel length modulation parameter. Something you need to calculate. Generally speaking, is given. And some other minor IV characteristics. Uh, you have a breakdown phenomenon. We, we did have it back in diode as well, right? If you apply a drain to source voltage too high without, without applying a VGS voltage, it could be turned on as well. That is breakdown. That's not something good. And uh, it is also depending on the temperature for the cutting voltage, 
let's say, threshold voltage and the conduction parameters case. And here's a net effect for, for both. Yeah, this is the interesting. When you the temperature increase, then what happened is for the given VGS, the current is going to decrease. And uh, what scenario can make the temperature increase? Transistor. Transistor circuit, the temperature increase could be induced by what? If you use the transistor as what? A switch, a switch on and off, on and off, switching loss, a lot of loss. Loss is increasing the temperature. Okay. Loss is the power loss, power loss introducing the increase of the temperature. And the uh, sub threshold conduction. And this means what? This means not ideally your VGS, it, when it is below the threshold voltage, actually the current is not absolutely zero. It's a start to have some current build up. It's not absolute zero. Okay. This is so-called sub-threshold. These are some uh, minor IV characteristics. And uh, these are all about the basics. Uh, we can stop here for today. And from next uh, lecture on, we're going to study the DC analysis. And uh, at the beginning of that, I view once again, review the concept. Uh, what does it mean by DC analysis and what does it mean by AC analysis? Why we are conducting them? All of these concepts must be very clear. Otherwise, you don't even know what you do, what you're doing, and why you're doing so. Okay. All right. So, any questions regarding this course uh, regarding today's lecture? Any questions you have? So with the MOSFET, you can also use it as a voltage regulator, kind of like a diode. Just referring it to the graph, I guess I'm trying to ask. Um, what do you mean by voltage regulator? Well, doing the homework with the Zener diodes, like a regular, uh -huh. you can regulate a voltage. You can also do that with the MOSFET. Uh, no, 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 no. No? Okay. The, no, the MOSFET cannot do that. That the Zener diode can do that because it is using the, uh, the low, relatively low uh, breakdown voltage. It's okay. actually not regulate the voltage; it's just protecting the voltage. Okay. If the That's voltage cool. beyond yeah beyond a certain level, it's gonna be off, become off, and short, short down the rest of circuit. So. So that's kind of a protection. It's not a regulating, actually. OK, that makes sense. Yep. Sure. Any other questions regarding the course and everything? We still have five minutes. We can finish earlier, but uh, 